For accommodations, right, there were three different places that I stayed at. So the first one, I really, really love this place. It's called L7 by Lotte. I would consider it quite quite a premium hotel it's quite aesthetic which is why i wanted to try staying there and they do have a couple of branches so i, I stayed at the myeongdong one there's one at hongdae and then there's one at Gangnam. i think a lot of people don't recommend staying at myeongdong anymore just because it's kind of like a dead town but i kind of disagree i do think that myeongdong is reviving slowly but surely reviving and while i was there my friend um, even though the streets were like uh, quieter than how it used to be, um, I still think that there are quite a lot of shops that are open. Also because Myeongdong is such a central area, it was very easy for us to get to different places that we want to go. And then the next hotel we stayed at, um, actually we went to an Airbnb first. So in Busan, we stayed in an Airbnb. It's a really nice place. It's in Chungang station if I'm not wrong so it's like one station away from Busan station and the best thing is it's just literally a one minute walk from the station to the apartment it's also like a five to ten minute uh, walk to Lotte uh, mall and it had like a nice view um, the Airbnb host uh, even though we didn't meet the person in person um, but they actually responded really really fast and that was like great. We were like struggling with the plugs and stuff but it all worked out fine. Um, and the third place I stayed at was Kreto Myeongdong. Um, I super love this place. It's not the most grand hotel. I would say this is quite um, maybe 3 star. I will say that Kreto is quite small in terms of the hotel room size so it will be a little bit squeezy. Um, compared to like L7 where there's like a lot more space to walk around but I still think it's a decent hotel um, and it's clean and it's um, comfortable so yeah I got a bunch of questions from you guys and I'm going to answer them for you so the first question here is salon deets and how to book your hair looks really good thanks so the salon that I went to was actually at Hongdae and it's called Sun Siki. It's actually like a celebrity hair salon. So um, the person who opened this uh, has actually done the hairs of J Park and all sorts of other celebrities. Like J Park was the one that caught my attention. I was like, J Park? Like what the heck? Very near the Kakao Friends Hongdae station uh, store. So yeah. And how to book is really just on their website. So it's like kind of foreigner friendly, I would say. So you go on their website, right? And then you really just put in the details that they will require of you. Like your name, when you're coming down, what time you're coming down, which um, salon uh, stylist you're looking for, and what kind of hairstyle that you're looking to do. Are you going to cut your hair only? Are you going to color your hair, dye your hair? reborn your hair whatever if you're wondering like how do you choose uh which hairstylist you want to go with honestly if you type sunsiki on instagram underscore right a bunch of like the hairstylists uh will come up or if you go to sunsiki's instagram you will also see like the different uh hairstylists there and then you can go into their own individual profiles so that's where you can see like their hair um the kind of hair haircuts that they do like each stylist has a different style so um the one that i personally uh tried was pine so pine her kind of hairstyle is really like wolf cuts like in a couple of their bios they also do state and spe like what they specialize in so some people um their specialty is in color so like they can do like really cool fancy colors and things like that so it really really depends what you are going to the salon uh, to do and then in terms of cost right because I know like everyone's wondering like what the cost is like it's really not that bad okay so in terms of pricing um, the cut was 40,000 won and there was discount because I'm a foreigner and they had like foreigner discount, um, like traveler's discount. So the cut was discounted 
um, coloring my hair. I didn't dye my hair. I just did a black color. And that was a 190,000 won, so just about $200. So in total, my whole head, my whole hair salon experience was about $250 sing dollars. And yeah, I think the in terms of like the whole experience was really nice. Um, they really treat you like royalty. Like you have to, the moment you step in, right? They like greet you and then like they take all your bags and help you put in this locker where they keep it safe and then they will put like a rope on you and then like you're just treated like a queen. Um, you also get to choose like a drink of your choice uh, while you're there so like they serve you a drink. I think that was really good. Must go cafes. Oh my gosh. Okay so like letter to future. I'm gonna no damn space. I know it's called no damn space. So it's essentially like a place where you can get croffles. Croffles is their specialty, which is like a croissant waffle. And then you can also um, get this set of like postcard and like a stamp. So you know those like really nice wax seals. So what you do is like you write a letter to yourself and then um, you can actually write the address to any part of the world and they will mail it to you whatever day you want. Um, another cafe that I would recommend is to go to Knotted. Knotted is like the most famous cafe I would say in Korea. So many many outlets uh, with the smiley face. It's like a donut cafe and yeah, I went to the one at Chongdam. So honestly, I picked that one because it was like one of the larger knotted cafes and it had like a photo booth outside the, the store. Um, I'm pretty sure like the other ones didn't have lah. So that's the one I wanted to go to so we could like take cute pictures. Um, yeah, so the donut was really good and I highly recommend you guys go check it out. It's just very aesthetic and if you like cute uh, cafes then you, you have to go there. The third cafe that you should go to is Dot Coffee and I know it's kind of um, strange to say Dot Coffee because like it was kind of like one of those that we kind of randomly stumbled upon but I really think that it was really like a simple cafe with like pretty good bakes and um, a nice drink. In terms of like places that you should go to, right, if you want to go to really swanky cool cafes, I think the two locations is number one, Songsu. Songsu is such a hit place, um, so many good cafes there. Second one is uh, uh, Hannamdong. Hannamdong has a couple of cafes there as well and eateries which are very hip as well. Um, I didn't really get to eat much there. We did go to a cafe there called Narrow Path which was very nice. Um, I also recommend going there uh, if you have the time. So a question that someone sent was, must I wait at the airport till my PCR results come in? So actually you don't have to. Um, after you take your PCR test, right, just go straight to your accommodation. So you can actually like get out the airport, uh, just take the train to your accommodation and then wait at your accommodation until your results come. But honestly, when I reach my accommodation, I just like, took a quick rinse and by the time I took my quick rinse and came out like my results were like sent so yeah restaurant recommendations oh my god um I have like restaurant recommendations okay so oh my gosh I already have like the top three in my head so the first one um is min milk min milk noodles uh though that is really really like a must go um it's like, if you guys watch Nevertheless, right, the K-drama Nevertheless, um, you will notice that this noodle place was featured in the K-drama itself. Uh, and I went to visit because of that. But, oh my gosh, the food was so good. Like, the bowl of noodles, it's like vermicelli noodles, um, like a bowl of pho. And then it came with, like, croquet, like, potato croquet. And... And then I small like a bowl of rice. And that whole set meal was like heaven. Like I will a hundred percent go back there again once I go back to Korea. But like you have to try that place. Um the second place I recommend is Changin Takarbi. So 
in Singapore, you can't really find Takarbi, so I do recommend going to this Takarbi place. They have a couple of outlets as well, but we went to the one at Kungkuk University Station. So um, basically, it's like you get this like chicken on this like big pan, and then um, you can add mozzarella cheese. It was so good, and then you need to get the fried rice. The fried rice, um, you throw it into the pan, mix it with the chicken and cheese, and eat it all together like oh it's so good and then the third one i would recommend is this like famous beef shop place that me and my friend stumbled upon when we were just done with an exhibition at ddp so i do recommend that place and i can't remember the name i'm so sorry but i'm going to like find it and like leave the name over here okay if i go to seoul and busan how long should i spend in busan Okay, that's a really really good question. Um, honestly, I went for a 10-day trip, right? And I only spent two days in Busan, one night. And I don't think it's enough. Maybe three to four days would be a good time frame in Busan. So yeah, spend a longer time there. It's nice with the beaches and um, the sea. Thoughts on Hyde Museum, oh my gosh. Okay, so like Hyde Museum, honestly, I really, really loved it. Um, it's really nice, especially, okay, if you're a fan of any of like the Hyde artists like TXT, BTS, uh, Seventeen and Hyper and whatever, right? You will love it because of like, I mean obviously you get to see a lot of different things about behind the scenes like how they work as artists like their goals and motivations and what makes them like do what they do um but i think even for people who are not like into these different k-pop groups right like the museum itself is just very like interesting just because like you get to get into the know-how of like how do they mix music together and like how do they like produce these like award-winning like songs and things like that um and like the really like the behind the scene process of what it's like to be a k-pop idol like the how many hours they are like training and things like you know they have like these videos of their like training like dance train training practices and things like that um, so yeah, and they also did like interviews with a couple of profiles of the different K-pop groups Especially because K-pop is such a big thing in Korea um, This museum, I guess, can kind of give you a little insight um, If I might make a pun there A little insight into like the industry itself So yeah, I, I do think it's a good experience and it's fun that is all the questions we got for today and I hope I answered all the questions that you guys might have and also provided a couple of tips here and there on like what you need to know yeah if you guys have any other questions about Korea things to do you guys can uh, leave them in the comment section and then I will respond to you down there and I'll see you guys in my next video